Hello, and welcome to this APCO Basic Science Objective video about hypertensive disease in pregnancy. The objectives of this video are to describe the physiology of normal regulation of blood pressure in pregnancy, understand proposed pathophysiology of preeclampsia and associated end organ damage, compare and contrast the pharmacology of antihypertensive medications used in pregnancy, and describe the mechanism of action of magnesium and the prevention of recurrent eclamptic seizures. Hey, I was wondering if I could run this patient in triage by you. Ms. Jones is a 41-year-old G1P0 with Dai Dai twins at 24 weeks who presents with a rash. I think the rash is just a little allergic reaction, but I'm really worried about her blood pressure. It is super low. She used to be 110s over 70s, but now she's 90s over 60s. Do you think she's okay? She says she feels fine. I can come in and take a look at the rash, but the blood pressure is very normal. Meet me in the workroom and we can review after we see Ms. Jones. All right, let's review. There are normal changes that can happen with blood pressure in pregnancy. Progesterone mediates vascular smooth muscle, leading to a natural nadir in blood pressure at the end of the second trimester. Blood pressure is also affected by placental vascular bed remodeling in early pregnancy, which increases capacitance and decreases resistance to flow in the placental bed. The important thing is, these physiological changes can be altered, leading to hypertensive diseases in pregnancy. Ms. Jones is back in triage. Now she is 36 weeks and complaining of contractions. Her initial blood pressure was 147 over 95, but the repeat was 138 over 85, and she's not in labor, so I was going to send her home. No, wait! We can't let her leave yet. That blood pressure needs further evaluation. Why don't you go review the APGO educational videos number 8 and number 18, and then we can debrief. Now that you've caught up on some of the terminology from the APGO videos, let's review a little pathophysiology. It is unclear exactly how preeclampsia alters the normal regulation of maternal blood pressure. One theory states that there is a two-step process. First, there is a lack of remodeling of the spiral arterial intima by the cytotrophoblastic cells, therefore creating less capacitance in the placental bed. Second, placental hypoxia damages the syncytium and alters the proangiogenic and antiangiogenic balance, leading to increased oxidative stress and endothelial dysfunction. For example, in the kidney, endothelial damage leads to inactivation of free VEGF endotheliosis and leads to proteinuria. There are several factors that predispose a patient to preeclampsia. These include preeclampsia in a previous pregnancy, a sevenfold increase, first degree relative with preeclampsia, two to fourfold increase, primiparity, multiple gestation, maternal age over 40, diabetes, obesity, pre-existing hypertension or renal disease, use of in vitro fertilization, and systemic lupus erythematosus. Another theory states that disordered immunity and inflammation lead to the development of preeclampsia. Several other factors such as endothelin, nitric oxide, oxidative stress, and heme oxygenase have been implicated in the inflammatory response leading to preeclampsia. Hello doctors! I gave Miss Jones the IV labetalol you ordered and her blood pressure is now 140 over 87. Do you want to start magnesium? Wait! Magnesium? I didn't order any chemistry studies. How do you know she needs a replacement? Yes, please start magnesium. We will be out soon. So we're not replacing magnesium. We are using it to help prevent seizures, which can occur in the setting of preeclampsia. There are three mechanisms that allow for this. The first is that the magnesium competes with calcium for calcium channels blocking intracellular flow of calcium needed to initiate neuronal firing. This raises the threshold for neuronal triggering of seizure activity. Second, magnesium also triggers cerebral vasodilation, thus reducing ischemia generated by cerebral vasospasm during an eclamptic event. Finally, the antagonistic effects of magnesium on calcium affect the cerebral endothelium that forms the blood-brain barrier. Decreased intracellular calcium inhibits endothelial contraction and opening of tight junctions that are linked to the actin cytoskeleton. The biggest concern with magnesium, however, is the potential for toxicity. The therapeutic range is between 4 and 8 milligrams per deciliter. The good thing is, there are several signs of impending toxicity that we can assess. 
Initially, there is a loss of patellar deep tendon reflexes when serum levels reach around 10 mg per deciliter. This is followed by weakness, double vision, and dysarthria. Finally, respiratory depression or arrest can occur when levels reach over 14 mg per deciliter. Let's pause, think, and apply. For a pregnant patient who has chronic hypertension, will keeping their blood pressure under control decrease their risk of developing preeclampsia? Treating hypertension is important for maternal cardiovascular health but does not decrease the risk of developing superimposed preeclampsia. All right, it's time for rapid fire. Let's review what are the most common antihypertensives used to treat acute severe hypertension. Ooh, let's see, let's see. Intravenous labetalol, hydralazine, and immediate release oral nifedipine. Correct. Okay, labetalol. How does it work? Where is it metabolized and how fast will it work? Hmm, labetalol is a selective alpha-1 and non-selective beta-adrenergic blocker. Labetalol acts on peripheral smooth muscle to cause vasodilation. Beta blockers also decrease arterial blood pressure by reducing cardiac output. It is metabolized in the liver and has an onset of action of about 10 minutes IV or 2 hours orally. Correct! Next, category nifedipine, same question. What can you tell me? Hmm, let me think. Nifedipine is a calcium channel blocker that inhibits calcium influx into vascular smooth muscle. Nifedipine can be used as an oral instant release formulation, which has an onset of action between 10 to 15 minutes and is metabolized by the liver. Aha! That is correct. You're doing great. Two more questions for the prize of a golden weekend off. Hydralazine. Tell me how does it work and how fast can I see a change? Ooh, hydralazine. Okay, hydralazine directly dilates peripheral vessels. Hydralazine alters the intracellular calcium release and interferes with smooth muscle calcium influx. This leads to an inhibition of phosphorylation of myosin protein, which leads to an increase in heart rate, stroke volume, and cardiac output. It is metabolized in the liver, and when given intravenously, the onset of action is 10 to 20 minutes. Ha! That is correct. Now for the final question. Methyl dopa a medication not used for acute hypertension, but often used for chronic hypertension in pregnancy, has what mechanism of action? Ooh, methyl dopa centrally stimulates alpha-2 adrenergic receptors. It is a phenylalanine derivative and an aromatic amino acid decarboxylase inhibitor. That is correct. You have won a golden weekend off. Hey, sorry about that. The second you're needing me in the ER. All right, one more thing to know. There are certain antihypertensives we try to avoid in pregnancy. Angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE inhibitors and the related drugs are the first group. They are associated with renal abnormalities when used in the second half of pregnancy. Also, mineral corticoid receptor agonists such as spironolactone the anti-androgenic activity would cause feminization of a male fetus. Hey, there's another patient in triage. She is 37 years old at 36 weeks with myasthenia gravis and chronic hypertension and her first blood pressure is 189 over 110. Ha! Perfect timing! I'm coming to evaluate her right now. Sounds like she might have superimposed preeclampsia. Don't mag her! Let's pause, think, and apply. For the patient the intern is about to evaluate, 37 years old at 36 weeks, with myasthenia gravis, or MG, chronic hypertension, and possible superimposed preeclampsia, why did the resident tell the intern not to start magnesium for seizure prophylaxis? MG is an autoimmune disorder which produces antibodies to the acetylcholine receptors in the neuromuscular junction, causing muscle weakness. Since magnesium blocks intracellular calcium influx at the neuromuscular junction, it can result in profound muscular weakness and respiratory failure, thus worsening the effects of MG. <sighs> I still have so much to learn. This concludes this APCO Basic Science Objective video about hypertensive disease in pregnancy. You should be able to describe the physiology of normal regulation of blood pressure in pregnancy, Understand proposed pathophysiology of preeclampsia and associated end organ damage. 
Compare and contrast the pharmacology of antihypertensive medications used in pregnancy and describe the mechanism of action of magnesium in the prevention of recurrent eclamptic seizures.